next semester starts soon and we are so excited to welcome you into our friendly and inclusive community. If you're joining us, we've got everything you need to get started. Check out our new student pages and use our handy checklist to make sure you're ready. And watch the latest videos from U of G students to make the most of your time here. From tips about the best places to visit, socializing and where to eat and drink. To advice about living on a budget, the support on offer here and lots more. We can't wait for you to join us. From our whole U of G community. Welcome, Welcome to the U of G! G. everybody, welcome to our new student live Q&A for our PGDE primary and PGDE STEM students here at the University of Glasgow, Dumfries campus. My name is Amy, I am part of the team here in Dumfries and I'm so excited to speak to you all today and introduce you to some of our teaching team. So first things first, congratulations, you've got your offer. We are so looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries campus. We're gonna give you lots of answers today. So if you have any questions for us, please go to slido.com and use the hashtag U of G and you can ask um, myself, our panel, any questions you might have. You can also use the text chat that's on YouTube as well and that'll come through to us. If you have any questions at all throughout this session, please just ask and we are ready to help you get those answers. So first things first, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about our campus in Dumfries and our school. So Dumfries itself is located in southwest Scotland, approximately 75 miles from the city of Glasgow, and we are a really friendly and welcoming community. We have everything you need from cafes, bars, clubs and restaurants all within our town centre. But of course, we have plenty of options further afield throughout the region as well. We have sports and health facilities, including our ice rink, swimming pools, gyms, rock climbing. We have our cinema and we have theatres as well. We actually have the oldest working theatre in the whole of Scotland, the Theatre Royal Dumfries. Um, and we have, of course, shopping in our town centre as well. We have a really vibrant cultural heritage here in Dumfries with music, literary and arts festivals. We actually have a festival that takes place in the summer right on our campus, which is brilliant fun every single year. And being the third largest region in Scotland, we are not short of the great outdoors. So if hiking and nature trails are your thing or mountain biking, we've got forests, rivers, the coast, lots and lots for you to explore throughout the region. Now about our campus itself. So we are based on the Crichton campus in Dumfries. It's 85 acres of parkland and is just beautiful. We are very, very lucky here in Dumfries. So we are the School of Social and Environmental Sustainability. We are part of the College of Social Sciences at the University of Glasgow. And on our campus, we typically welcome staff and students from around the world from more than 40 countries every single year. Um, so we have a really, really great cohort uh, joining us uh, this year. Uh, we are surrounded by what we like to call the living laboratory uh, of Dumfries and Galloways. And this includes our teaching garden right on our back door, which is actually in the picture here on your screen right now. And um, that is used for teaching and research, but also for socialization. We have garden club. We have lots and lots of activities for you to join in on uh, in that garden. But like I say, around the whole campus itself, we have the coast, we have the rivers, we have peatlands, forestry, agriculture, anything you could possibly want uh, to help enhance your studies. We pride ourselves on small class sizes here in Dumfries. So you really get to know not only your lecturers and your tutors, but your peers as well and everyone else in your class. We have a really close knit community here in Dumfries and our academics are among the top researchers in their fields. You're gonna be learning from some really fantastic people on these programs. So our campus itself, there's two main buildings I want to tell you about that you'll need to know. So Rutherford McCowan is our main hub on campus. That's where our reception is, the school office, Cafe Rutherford, Hunterian in the South, teaching spaces, study spaces. Most of our staff offices are in Rutherford McCowan as well, if you're trying to find your lecturer or tutor. Uh, we have research offices, our estates office, and the National Centre for Resilience as well. So if you're looking for someone, chances are you're going to be in the Rutherford McCowan building. On campus, we also have Maxwell House. This is our postgraduate hub, so dedicated space for postgraduate students. Um, study space, just or, or you know, space just to hang out and relax after class. Uh, we also have our postgraduate research offices and some teaching spaces in Maxwell as well. So the school as a whole, uh, we have four main subject areas, which is environmental science, global sustainable development, 
education and tourism. And these map on really nicely to not only our programs that we offer undergraduate and postgraduate, but our research as well. So we have world changing research going on at the University of Glasgow. We're very proud of that. And based at our campus, we have the Education Interdisciplinary Research Group. We also have the Environmental Science and Sustainability Group, the Glasgow End of Life Studies Group, and the University of Glasgow Tourism Studies Group. So you have access to all of these wonderful research networks and find out what they are doing out in the world. Very briefly, I just wanted to touch on uh, some accommodation. I'm just going to run through these very, very quickly. Um, we have three uh, university accommodations in Dumfries, Laurie now, Dumfries Hall and Brook House. So Dumfries Hall at the top right of your screen there is the closest one to campus. Um, it's basically two minutes from the campus um, and about a 20 minute walk into town or you can take the bus as well. It's six flats across two floors and uh, they have single rooms as well as en suite. Oh, sorry, all single rooms have en suite. Uh, we also have our shared living room and kitchen spaces as well in each of the flats and laundry on site. Uh, Laurie now is one of our um, kind of further out from the campus. It's about a 40 minute walk or maybe five to 10 minutes on the bus. There's seven rooms there with a large kitchen and living space down the stairs and a smaller pantry kitchen up the stairs as well. Um, and it has on site laundry, back garden and parking on site as well. And finally, Brook House, that is right in the centre of town of Dumfries. Um, it has uh, 12, sorry, 13 rooms across two floors, um, all ensuite single rooms as well with shared living space. And like Laurie now, there's a big kitchen and dining room downstairs and then a smaller kitchen up the stairs as well. Laundry on site as always and parking and back garden with bike storage in the garage as well. So a whistle stop tour of our accommodation. If you have any more questions about accommodation, though, please just let us know. I am delighted now to pass on to my colleague, Anna. Um, welcome, Anna. We're so looking forward to having you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Amy. And thanks, everyone, for coming along to this and to find out a bit more about the programme and the campus. Um, so I just want to start by giving you a quick overview of the key dates. And I think many of you will have this already, but just as a reminder, um, that we start on the Monday, the 4th of September, and we're looking forward to welcoming you, you to the campus then. That's our induction day. So we have a whole range of different activities planned um, and can show you around the campus. And it's really for you to get to know each other as well. Um, and then the top classes begin on Tuesday, the 5th of September, right through to Friday, the 27th of October. So that's eight weeks of top lectures and seminars on campus. Um, but within those eight weeks, you'll have the one day in your placement school on a Thursday as well, once that's organised. You'll then begin um, the eight weeks of school placement, um, beginning on the Monday, the 30th of October. Then back to campus for another eight weeks of taught lectures and seminars after Christmas, Monday, the 8th of January. Um, and then you head out on to placement. And there's a slight difference between the PGDE primary and the PGDE secondary STEM placement dates. And um, so I should say that these are the ones for, for primary, um, but that's at this, you've got 10 weeks in total. The holidays occur in the middle of that, and then you're back, back to campus for a final assessment and all done and wrapped up by Friday the 7th of June. Okay, and then on the next slide here, I have, um, here we go. Um, a list of the different uh, classes and, and that's the, basically your timetable. So you should have also received this in an email, um, but I'm happy to send it out again. Um, so everybody has it. And um, this is basically just to show you what times you'll be, you'll be starting at and what times you can finish. So Mondays and Tuesdays, you're beginning at 10. Wednesdays, it's at 9 o'clock. Thursday, you will be school day placement all day. And um, Friday's 9 o'clock as well. And there's various times that you'll you'll finish at. Um, and just to highlight that some of the classes will be shared between PGDE primary, PGDE secondary. So the understanding, learning and teaching runs across both of those programs. And that's highlighted in the blue there. And um, we've made one very slight change to a Tuesday. Um, but you'll be glad to hear that you'll be finishing slightly earlier at half past three rather than four o'clock. Um, and also, I think it would be good to highlight here that although it looks like you might not have a break between things, we always make sure that you've got time for lunch and got time for breaks between classes. So you'll never be 
in a full class for exactly two hours and then straight into another one. We always make sure that there's a space in there for you. Okay, and this is the timetable um, for the second semester. So similar start times there, Mondays and Tuesdays, 10 o'clock until four o'clock, Wednesdays, nine o'clock until four, Thursday, you're out on your school placement day and Friday's the same. You finish at half past one on a Friday. Okay, and that's my slides. So um, today I've also got my colleague, Sarah Stevenson, who um, co-leads the education team and she teaches within the PGDE primary and secondary as well. Thank you so much, Anna. That's brilliant. So much information there. And we had so many questions uh, coming in. So I'd like to invite Sarah to join us on screen now. And we will start working our way through these. Thank you to everyone who sent in questions. We will do our best to get answers to you um, right now. So let's see our first question. So I'm having trouble with enrolment. Who can I contact? Great question. So your first port of call should be the REST team, the Registration Enrollment Support Team. The link for that I'll put on the screen right now. So it's gla.ac.uk slash myglasgow students, S-S-E-T-R-E-S-T. -E -E um, they are the, um, the team that can help you with any enrollment or registration questions um, straight away. We have a live chat function as well, and there's lots and lots of guidance on those pages. So if you do have any troubles, um, please go and visit that site, and that should be able to help you with any enrollment queries you may have. Okie doke, next question. What building is in the induction day in Maxwell House or Rutherford McCarran? Um, so I should have said, actually, when I was talking about my campus, we do have two buildings on campus. First of all, they're very, very close to each other. So don't worry if you ever feel like you're not sure which building. They are very, very close to each other. They're just a very short walk. I think we might have lost Amy's connection, Anna. <laughs> so um, maybe we could just pick up on that, that the, the building is a short walk, um, just literally a couple of moments um, over a, a lovely little park um, area. So um, the induction day as it stands at the moment, I don't know if Amy can update us on um, which building that's aimed for. Sorry, Amy, we were just... Continuing apologies. the, the, the technical, short thank walk you so much. explanation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, technical difficulty, everyone. I do apologise. Um, yes, so the best port of call is to arrive at the Rutherford McCowan building. Um, that is where our main reception is, and that's where we um, usually welcome everyone. So head to the Rutherford McCowan building on induction day, um, and we'll get you organised from there. Oh, hi, Laurie. Brilliant question. I was just wondering when we will find out about our replacements. Okay, can I answer that? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, the placements, uh, as you can imagine, um, sort of like putting a jigsaw together and quite a complicated exercise. Um, and we're actually working on those at the moment um, because you will be having a one day a week placement in the same school that you will then um, or well do your block placement in for your first eight week placement. Um, we are looking to just sort all of those out at the moment, but we have to look at different factors. We have to look at your address. The placement will be within 90 minutes um, commute. That's standard across all initial teacher education institutions in Scotland. That's the agreement. So you will be placed within 90 minutes of your home address. So um, our colleague Heather in uh, our fabulous admin team will be looking at all of those factors at the moment and working to get your placement sorted out just now. So we should be able to communicate those with you within the first week um, for sure. So you won't go out on the, the one day week placement until maybe the second week, I think it is, Anna isn't it yeah. um just on that little note actually to do with the placement if anybody listening has not yet filled in um an epvg form and applied for an epvg form please could you get in touch um with our administration team because um, it's one of the requirements for being on placement that you actually have a PVG in place. So that's just really important to point out. I think most people have done it, but just in case there's somebody listening that hasn't hasn't done that yet, then that's worth a mention. 
Definitely worth the mention. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Um, Okie doke. Great question. What happens at the October holidays? Are we on placement on the Thursday still? Do we come to uni over the DNG holidays? Yeah, so I can answer that one. Um, you won't go into your placement schools um, on the Thursdays because um, they'll also be closed for the October holidays. But we do still have classes um, planned within, um, within our program on campus. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, Okie doke. Similar question here. Are we in uni over the February holidays? Timetable say we finish lectures on February 23rd and don't start placement until 4th of March. Are those two weeks a holiday? That is a very good question. I'm just looking at what I have here. That will be right. I don't know, Sarah, is there anything you want to... I think we might just need to double check the, with our timetabling guru on that one because I yeah. think we've got um, we've got classes running right up to the point that um, they go on placement in March. So we'll need to. That's maybe not something we can answer just quite yet, but we can um, come back to everybody with that one. Yeah, we can certainly email out a clarification on that for sure. It might just be a, a technical glitch on the timetable, like you say. So we will email out a clarification just so you know exactly what's happening come February. So don't worry about that at all. Thank you so much. Okie doke. Is there help with expenses? So we do have an expenses uh, policy for the school. Um, these can, can help with expenses if you are eligible for them. The actual policy itself will be sent out towards the start of classes. Um, and there'll be more information there for you then. Um, the university can also help signpost though to other sources of funding um, um, and anything that might be able to help you financially, we can signpost you to different um, you know, sources or services that might be able to help with that as well. Okie doke, our next question here. Are we able to use the Postgraduate Hub? Oh, of course you are, yes. The Postgraduate Hub is definitely for you. So that's located in Maxwell House. As I said, it's dedicated space for our postgraduate students. So all of our PhD primary and STEM students are more than welcome to use that space. Um, it's up the stairs in Maxwell House. It's kind of like a lounge area. There's desks and seating as well. Um, there's a small kitchen and toilets and everything and some kind of quiet space and printing facilities, I believe, as well. So um, lovely, lovely space for you guys to use on campus. Do we need anything in particular for our first week other than a pen and a notebook? Great question, I love that. No, I think a pen and a notebook uh, sounds great. I think that would be very well prepared. And um, sometimes it can be a good idea to bring some additional food with you. Uh, we do have a cafe on campus. We have a few cafes around as well. Um, but sometimes that can be just quite a useful thing to think about in advance. Definitely, thank you so much. Okay, our next question. Is there a lift in Maxwell House? There is indeed, there is a lift in Maxwell House that will take you to the second floor, uh, to the postgraduate hub. Yes, no problem. Thank you very much. How big will the classes be? So that will be around um, for the PGDE primary and where PGDE primary and STEM come together, um, usually around 20, um, maybe just, just 20, 21, 22 um, at the, the biggest. So they're, they're very small classes. Um, that we work within and that's quite nice because it means that there's lots of opportunities to ask questions and to work together. Oh definitely, sounds great, thank you so much. Okay, next question here, we've got so many questions coming in, thank you so much everyone. Um, is it feasible to work part-time during the programme? What do we think? <laughs> Can I, can I start by um, contributing yes. to that answer? So um, I did the PGCE myself and in Dundee many years ago. And the best piece of advice that I was given was to treat it like a full-time job because of the requirements um, when you are on campus and then the subsequent work that you will have to do for each of the different um, courses that you're on. Um, certainly when you're on placement, you know, you're on placement five days a week when that kicks in after the October break. And uh, again, in March, um, you will have an awful lot to be focusing and concentrating on. Um, 
it's not even an entire year. So, you know, it, it, I think it, at the end of the day, it also comes down to how organized you are as a person. If you feel that you can fit in some part-time work at the weekends, but if it's kind of evenings as well, just be careful about your own well-being and not overloading yourself um, would be my advice from experience of having done the same route into teaching myself. So I don't know if Anna wants to add anything into that. Yeah, absolutely. As Sarah says, um, you know, it is a full time course when you're on placement, you know, that's every day and there'll be work to do before you go into class, um, when you go before you go into school. So I think just being mindful about how much you can take on alongside that and the additional reading and preparation that you have to do. Um, and as Sarah said, you know, if you're organized and you feel like you can take on a little bit at the weekend, then that's completely up to you, but it's worth bearing in mind um, that this is quite an intense programme. Yeah, definitely. Great advice, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, also worth mentioning, I think, at this point as well, that we do have dedicated student support services on our campus as well. So if, if we are feeling a little bit overwhelmed or just I have questions or, you know, wanting some advice or some help, we have um, our dedicated student support officer on site um, on the campus. But we also have, of course, all of our staff and our advisors of study as well. Um, you're more than welcome to come and chat with anyone. If you have any questions, any concerns, any worries, please, please, please reach out. Please don't suffer in silence. Let us know and let us help you. Um, and we'll do our very best to give you all the advice we possibly can. Um, so thank you so much. Okay, another question. Is the Thursday placement for both primary and secondary PGDE students? Yes, so I think that's um, quite an easy one to answer because it um, yeah, goes across both, both programmes. Brilliant. Uh, okay, doke. Oh, hi, Laurie. So how long will we be observing on placements and when will we be starting teaching lessons? How many hours roughly would we be actually teaching once we do? Can I answer that? Of course you can. <laughs> okay, so what you will receive ahead of placement is quite a structured schedule that breaks it down per week. And basically, you're incrementally building up your responsibility within the class and always in conjunction with discussions with your class teacher, your class mentor. So um, the framework that we provide you is a suggested minimum amount that you should be teaching of classes, you know, that week. But if you feel ready and your teacher feels that you're ready to do a little bit more than that, then that's absolutely fine. So it really, um, we provide a guide, a minimum guide, and it's up to you how, how your negotiations with the, with the, the, club, the staff in the school that you're um, working in go. You know, some of you might have different experiences of already working in a school and might feel a bit more confident a bit sooner. Um, and some of you might need a bit longer and that's okay. The, the flexibility is built in there. But the placements, you, you have to complete the 18 weeks of placement to ensure that you've um, got enough weeks of placement under your belt for registration with the General Teaching Council. So um, the placements are incredibly important. That said, the one day a week placements will be really beneficial in helping you get to know your class and your teacher. And you might find um, those will generally be observational those days and the actual teaching will kick in on the block placements that helps <laughs> brilliant thank you so much i think we have one more question here which is what support from lecture teachers offered while we're actually on the placement Sarah, do you want to go for that one yeah yeah absolutely so um everybody will be allocated um a contact uh, lecturer or member of our uh, team that will support you. You'll get to know them over the coming weeks. You'll get to know who's going to be your um, school experience tutor and they will be your first port of call um, if you are having any difficulties on placement. They, they will be the person that will come and do the university assessed visit uh, towards the end of your placement um, and generally just you know dedicated to you to to supporting you through the placement all the way through it so um you we will be busy working all of that out there's a team predominantly of three or four um lecturers from 
our wider education team that support the PGDE placements, but you will have a, a dedicated point of contact. So, uh, and we'll let you know who that will be. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I think we've had one more question come in here. Perfect. Thank you. Is the Thursday placement school the same as a placement block? We are hoping so, yes. <laughs> yeah. So again, we're just busy sorting all the placements out at the moment. So, But that is the anticipation that you would be in the same class and the same school so you get to know everybody before your placement. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I do believe that is all of our questions for this morning. Thank you so much to everyone who sent them in. I do hope that's helped and you've got some of the answers you were looking for. If you're not watching this live or if you think of anything later on, please do reach out. You can contact us at dumfries-coms at glasgow.ac.uk. That's the address on your screen right now. dumfries-coms at glasgow.ac.uk. That will come to my team and I'll be able to help you out, get some answers for you. So please just reach out if you have any questions at all for our team. Uh, but all I'll say just now is, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Anna, Sarah, thank you. It was lovely to have you. Uh, it's great to be able to, to share all this information with our, with our students. And thank you for joining us. We cannot wait. We really cannot wait to welcome you to Team U of G very, very soon.